Good evening. Welcome to Atonement Lutheran Church on our, our last midweek Lenten service. Where did Lent go? The time has flown, and I want to thank um, everyone for coming. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you, Atonement. Thank you for everyone that has served meals, especially tonight. Thank you for um, the delicious soup and sandwich from, uh, from Emmanuel Lutheran Church. So let's give them a thank you, thank you. Thank you to all who are joining us wherever you are. Um, God is with you, and we join together for our last miracle the miracle of Lazarus being raised from the dead. As you can see, I am very much missing my, my partner. Pastor Lucinda is home, not feeling well, so I wave at her and say, I miss you. And so um, her and I just have so much fun doing ministry together that um, I truly am I'm, I'm gonna miss her tonight. So you just, you just have me and the Holy Spirit, so, but that's a good partner too, so God is good. So tonight, we begin with our call to worship. So let's just take a deep breath. Take a deep breath in. Breathe in God's peace. Breathe in God's light and God's love. And breathe out all of our concerns and all of our fears, and all of our to-do lists. We breathe in and out. Thanks be to God that you are here, and as we hear the wind blowing, the wind of North Dakota is like the Holy Spirit, and the wind blows where it may, and the Holy Spirit is moving, and so... We begin our service tonight with uh, an old, old Lenten hymn. If you, we're going to just have you turn to your hymnals on page 335, Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross. This is an old hymn written by Fanny Crosby um, back in, I think it's 1869. So let's, we are nearing the end of our Lenten season this week, Palm Sunday, and um, our journey to Holy Week begins at each of our churches. So I thank you again for worshiping together and raise your hand if you'd like to do this again. Okay, and um, yeah, maybe next time we go over to your church or we, we um, it's just fun to worship together. So we, let's stand as we sing, Jesus, keep me near the cross.
we will have our time of confession. We begin in the name of God who makes a way in the wilderness, God who walks with us and guides us in our pilgrimage journey. Amen. Let us take a moment of silence in this Lenten season and confess our sins in our heart. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow your ways. Assure us again of your love. Help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you, and all who gather to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and again and gathers you under his wings of love. So in Jesus' name, your sins are all forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you and teaches all of us how to live in love. Amen. Let us join together on our opening prayer. Lord, we come together to hear, see, and join in your word. Feed us, heal us, and lift us as we open our eyes, ears, and minds to your miracles around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So if everyone has one of our sheets of what do you see, what do you hear, what do you see, and as we join in, we will listen to our gospel, our gospel today for our last miracle, the miracle of Lazarus being raised from the dead, begins on John chapter 11, and I'm going to read from the Message Bible, a contemporary version of this reading. A man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her Martha of, of Bethany, the town of Mary and her, Martha, her sister Martha. This was the same Mary who massaged the Lord's feet with aromatic oils and wiped them with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was sick. So the sister sent word to Jesus, "Master, the one you love so very much is sick." When Jesus got the message, he said, This sickness is not fatal. It will become an occasion to show God's glory by glorifying God's Son. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. But oddly, oddly, when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he waited. He stayed on where he was for two more days. After the two days, Jesus says to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. They said, Rabbi, you can't do that. The Jews are out to kill you, and you're going back? Jesus replied, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in daylight does not stumble because there's plenty of light from the sun. Walking at night might be very well he, walking at night, he might very well stumble because he can't see where he is going. He said these things and then announced, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. I'm going to wake him up. The disciples said, Master, if he's gone to sleep, he'll, go to, he'll get a good rest and he'll wake up feeling fine. Jesus was talking about death. While his disciples thought he was talking about taking a nap. Then Jesus became explicit. Lazarus died. And I am glad for your sakes that I wasn't there. You're about to be given new grounds for believing. Now let's go to him. That's when Thomas, the one called the twin, said to his companions, come along. We might as well die with him. When Jesus finally got there, he found Nazareth already four days dead. 
Bethany was near Jerusalem, only a couple miles away, and many of the Jews were visiting Mary and Martha, sympathizing with them over their brother. Martha heard Jesus was coming and went out to meet him, while Mary remained in her the house. Martha said, Master, if you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Even now, I know whatever you ask God, he will give you. Jesus said, your brother will be raised up. Martha replied, I know that he will be raised up in the resurrection at the end of time. Jesus said, you don't have to wait for the end. I am right now the resurrection and the life. And the one who believes in me, even though he dies or she dies, will live. And everyone who lives believing in me will, excuse me, everyone who lives believing in me does not ultimately die at all. Do you believe this? Yes, Master. All along I have believed that you are the Messiah, the Son of God who comes into the world. After saying this, she went to her sister Mary and whispered in her ear, The teacher is here, and he's asking for you. The moment that Mary heard this, she jumped up and ran to him. Jesus had not yet entered the town, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When her sympathizing Jewish friends saw Mary run off, they followed her, thinking she was on her way to the tomb to weep there. Mary came to where Jesus was waiting and fell at his feet, saying, Master, if only, you had, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her sobbing, and the Jews with her sobbing, a deep anger welled up within him, and he said, Where did you put him? Master, come and see, they said. Jesus wept. The Jews said, look how deeply he loved him. Others among them said, well, if he loved him so much, why didn't he do something to keep him from dying? After all, he opened the eyes of a blind man. Then Jesus, the anger again welling up inside of him and within him, arrived at the tomb. It was a simple cave in the hillside with a slab of stone laid against it. And Jesus said, Remove the stone. The sister of the dead man, Martha, said, Master, by this time there is a stench. He's been dead for four days. Jesus looked her in the eye. Didn't I tell you, if you believed, you would see the glory of God? Then to the others, go ahead, take away the stone. They removed the stone. Jesus raised his eyes and looked up to heaven and prayed, Father, I am grateful that you have listened to me. I know you always do listen, but on account of this crowd standing here, I've spoken so that they might believe that you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out! And Lazarus came out, wrapped from head to toe, with a kerchief over his face. And Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. So tonight, I read a few words that um, our artist, Pastor Paul, has written to kind of help us get ready for watching this story. So I'm going to kind of tell you a few things to listen for and watch for. At the very beginning, listen how Pastor Paul himself is going to play the part of Lazarus. He begins by saying, I am Lazarus. So he is telling this from the point of view of Lazarus. The scene begins on the outskirts of the village of Bethany. It's seen in the background. The colors are kind of warm, and then they advance as confrontation with emotion begins to take place. You're going to see a little pathway that leads the viewer, we are the viewer, 
into the scene. And the people are gathering. And it's kind of like we are part of the people that are gathering in the village. Watch for that path as Jesus appears on the path, looking ahead to where he's going. And his disciples are following him. And we, the viewers, as disciples in the community, it's like we are following and going behind Jesus too. Like we are about to witness what is going to take place. Martha appears on the scene. She appears to Jesus. And um, look at her arms. They're outstretched, and, and she's upset. Mary joins the scene, and she kneels at Jesus' feet, reminding us of the story where Jesus comes to the home of Mary and Martha. We continue on as um, Jesus weeps, and there's kind of some painting that he does. He paints over part of Jesus' head, so it goes from this direction downward, and then he'll, he'll paint lifting the face up again that Jesus is looking forward to his mission. As the, as the cave is painted into the picture, it's kind of fascinating. The cave makes the outline of where you're going to see Lazarus. Then there's going to be a dark tomb where Pastor Paul is speaking as if he is Lazarus. And there's some very intentional movements here, talking mainly about death is not the end, but rather a pathway to resurrection and eternal life. Pastor Paul, the painter, wants you to really remember that important point. Death, death is not the end. It's a pathway to resurrection and eternal life. The scene is going to continue as the, the colors are going to get brighter, pointing to that hope that Jesus gives all of us. We all love to see the light that Pastor Paul right, gets in the scene. The light's going to come at the end as Lazarus is emerging from the tomb. The light will be touching his bindings, which are going to become unwrapped. And the light will stream in and above, touching Jesus and Lazarus and all of us in the scene. And I like to just think of that light as light and love that Jesus is surrounding all of us with. So, let's look and see what we see. You are listening to a dead man. That's right. Well, that's not quite right. But you've never heard someone who is dead for four days alive, talking and walking around. I am Lazarus, the man Jesus raised from the dead. You perhaps have heard of my sisters, Mary and Martha. When Jesus came to our house, Mary sat at Jesus' feet listening to him teach while Martha was working in the kitchen. You maybe recall that Martha was not happy with Mary for not helping, so she asked Jesus to tell Mary to get busy and help. But Jesus told Martha to not get upset, for Mary had chosen the better way. That was a shock to all of us who were there. The men were to study and talk, and they were the only ones allowed to sit at the feet of a rabbi. But here, Jesus allowed Mary to sit at his feet when the women were supposed to be in the kitchen. It was part of our cultural hospitality to have it this way. Our families were close. Since Jesus did not have a home of his own when he left Nazareth for his ministry, our home was always open to him when he was in the area. His disciples spent many nights in our home also. Our friendships grew strong. I was always amazed with his interpretations and teachings of the scriptures. He could take the most complicated things and make them simple. Things I could never understand before suddenly became crystal clear. But you're wondering about what happened to me. Most of what I know, I was told by Mary and Martha, my sisters. The only thing I remember 
about much of anything is being sick, really sick. It started with a fever. I was very weak. I laid there for several days and the fever just wouldn't go away. They tell me that I was often delirious. I can remember the look on their faces and knowing by their concerned look that my condition was serious. I heard them talking about calling for Jesus. I knew what they were thinking. We'd all seen Jesus cure so many diseases and illnesses. Surely he would be able to help me. That's all I remember, for shortly after that time, I died. At the time of death, the custom had become that bodies were dressed in long linen cloth and hands and feet were wrapped in burial bandages. Mary and Martha told me this is exactly how I was prepared for burial. Because of the hot climate and how quickly bodies would begin to decay, I was buried on the same day that I died. What I could not know is what would happen next. My sisters had sent word to Jesus that I was sick, thinking he would come running, but he didn't. In fact, it was four days later when he finally came. Martha came running down the road to meet Jesus angry at him for taking so long she blurted out lord if you had been here lazarus would not have died she went back and got mary they spent time there on the road and it was there that they told me that Jesus wept. He then asked to be taken to my tomb. When they got there, Jesus asked that the stone be rolled back from the tomb. But they told him not to because the stench of death would be too great. Everyone thought he must have wanted one last look at his friend. But Jesus said to them, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they rolled the stone back.
Then I am told that Jesus looked up to God to pray, then cried out. And here is where my memory is restored. I can tell you firsthand what happened next. It was like I was in a deep sleep, and I heard these words, Lazarus, come out. I opened my eyes. I didn't know where I was. I felt so weak. It was dark, yet there was a blazing light coming from somewhere. I sat up, turned my head, and saw that the light was coming through a door or opening of some sort. Looking around, I then realized where I was, in a burial tomb. What was I doing here? Then as I started to stand up, I saw that I was wearing these burial clothes. It began to dawn on me, I had been sick and I had been buried, but I couldn't understand. Had I been buried alive? Or if I was dead, what was happening now? It made no sense. I walked to the entrance of the tomb and there outside were crowds of people staring at me. Then I saw him. There was Jesus, standing with his arms outstretched. People were gasping. Some fainted. Others were yelling and screaming, clapping, praying, dancing. And then Jesus said, Unbind him and let him go. And they did. The sound of Jesus' voice had raised me from the dead. It all seemed so unbelievable. But then, there I was. Who was I to argue? I had no say over what just happened. You might think this would be a celebration for everyone. Countless numbers of people, though, were leaving their synagogues to follow Jesus. The religious leaders were so upset over this that they began plotting to kill Jesus. You will also read in your gospel that since so many were coming to see me as the evidence of this miracle, they were also plotting to kill me. Nothing was ever the same again. Just a few days later, Jesus would be crucified. We didn't understand. But only a couple of days after he died, we began hearing reports of those who had seen Jesus alive. Many could not believe this, but anyone who had been there at my tomb would know, yes, it was true. If Jesus could raise me after four days in the tomb, God could certainly raise him from the dead, just as he said would happen. This same Jesus will one day call your name into your grave 
and will raise you from the dead also. Peace be with you. notice that at the very end of the movie it's like the light came through the window it was really powerful in the back it was just like whoa thank you God (laughs) and um, I am I just love our stained glass window and so that's why I'm like oh I gotta go turn that on for the end so that's why I went back to turn on that's where this I am the resurrection and the life those are the verses that we read from John 11 from this story Jesus is the resurrection and the life. So let's take um, a few moments and just turn to one another and just share what did you see? What stood out for you? What was your favorite part? And then we'll talk about that and just a couple questions. Um, what did you see or are you here? You can also talk with yourself about have you ever felt, have you ever asked, where are you, Jesus? Where have you been? You know, in this, Jesus didn't show up right away. You know, if you had only been here, Jesus, this wouldn't have happened. Um, And we'll talk about the unbinding. So, share for a few minutes and we'll come on back. You guys are having some good discussion. I hate to break it up. Does anyone want to share? What did you see? What did you see? What did you see, Dresden? Everything. Everything. Yes, everything. What did you guys see? What was your favorite part? What stood out to you? Now you guys are all quiet. Yeah, for those that you couldn't hear, she was talking, as Sue is a nurse, I'm, I'm a nurse. Yeah, in times of illness and you know, sickness, you know, bringing that faith and, and, and um, that hope and, and believing and, you know, that that light comes. I like in the very beginning where Jesus is saying, in this illness, in this illness, there is not going to be death, but it is going to give glory to God. And that's what this whole scene, and even when Jesus prays near the end, he goes to the tomb and he looks up and is like, Father, I'm praying to you, you know, thanks for listening to me, and, you know, let people people see this and believe that you have sent me. You know, it's all about God's actions through Jesus and God's actions through us. It's very fascinating to me at the end where... In the Bible, it talks, Jesus says, you know, Lazarus, come out. 
And then Jesus says to them, who is them? The grieving crowd. They've come, they've come to grieve this friend, Lazarus. What happens after a funeral and grieving families? You bring casseroles, you come visit, you, you share and you weep and you, you're mourning together. So that's what this community came to support Mary and Martha in the death of their brother, Lazarus. And in the midst of this grieving group, new life happens. And Jesus is saying, you know, turning to the grieving crowd, unbind him and let him go. And so Jesus works through us. God works through you and through me to unbind Lazarus, to bring new life and, um, and let go. And sometimes we can think about, that's the last question, about what do you see binding yourself or community in the world? You know, what do we what do we need to help others let go of? What do we need to ask? You know, ask for help in the community of faith. So it's very important to be yeah, in that community and, and um, it's a beautiful story of resurrection, of new life. Is this story foretelling what's going to be happening? I have a question about that, Pastor. Mm -hmm. so Yep. Yeah. Right, right. Right, right. And and it's very important, and this is a very important detail, so thank you for bringing this up. When Lazarus found out that his friend died, what did he do? Yeah, well, yeah, excuse me, when Jesus found out that Lazarus had died, what did he do? Did Jesus come right away? He wept. Um, yep, he wept, but he, did he come right away when Mary and Martha said, come, my brother, my brother's sick, come. No. He waited, he waited, and, and um, he waited on purpose to show God's glory because in, um, in the Jewish time, in Jesus' time, they believed that after three days, the spirit um, would be lifted, the spirit would be gone, you would be really dead, you might say. So by waiting an extra two days, it meant he was dead for four days. So it wasn't like Jesus was going to come and just do CPR and get him back to life. He was really dead. And um, I believe all of this was a plan for Jesus to show who he is through God, how God is acting through him. Does that kind of answer that question? Well, I, so, I guess I never really thought of it as that he didn't know that Lazarus was dead when he got mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, And then what he did was kind of spontaneous. Right, right. Um, so there's, you know, like I said, there's a lot of history that comes in that sometimes we don't know about. So that waiting is, was a purposeful waiting so that when he came and said, Lazarus, come out, you know, and the people are like, what are you doing? You know, God, through Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, resurrected Lazarus from the dead. This story truly is a forecoming, a foretelling of Jesus' resurrection. It hit me in the stone, you know, remove the stone. I had never really paid attention to the stone. Well, where else are we going to see a stone coming up in the next 10 days, you know, next week? There's going to be a stone that is going to, Jesus is going to be placed in the tomb, and this tomb is going to be sealed shut with a, with a big stone. And on Easter morning, what's going to happen? The women are going to come. And the stone is rolled away. So um, that kind of, I'm like, oh, I never, I like rocks. You guys know that. So I'm like, oh, I hadn't paid attention to that part. But um, 
but yeah, the waiting and yeah, Jesus' plan through this was yeah, Jesus, Jesus kind of knew what he was doing. But um, has there ever been a time where you've you've said, you know, Jesus, where were you? Why, why did this have to happen? Or maybe you even said to your pastor, Pastor, why didn't you come? Why did you wait? Sometimes, and this has happened to me as a pastor, sometimes you, you want to get there right away and you just, you just can't. Um, but for some reason, it's like you're not supposed to. And, you know, like yesterday, I was supposed to go visit somebody at a certain time and something happened, so I ended up not being there for about two more hours. But that was exactly the time that God wanted me to be there. So um, God's timing is greater than our timing. So um, this, this is a story, I believe, of, of God's, God's timing. So do you see the light at the end? We all love seeing the light. And where was the light? On Lazarus, on Jesus, on everybody. And it came through in our window right, too, at the very end. That was just awesome, Jesus' light and love surrounding, surrounding us. So, anything else that um, anything else that you notice? Oh yeah, yeah. And what did that remind you of? Anything? Oh, okay, good. When I heard that, I I thought of coming up in Holy Week. I thought of. Um, you know, Peter, and he's, what's Peter going to do? He's going to deny Jesus how many times before the cock crows? So, um, but yeah, we could hear those, hear those crows coming in. So, anything else? So, just trust in God's timing. Trust in God's promise. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Trust that God is going to work through you and you and you and you and you and, you and me. And God's going to, going to use us to help unbind one another and unbind our community. To, God's going to use us to connect and bring new life. And um, the story is truly about new life and resurrection. And that same Jesus, as Jesus called Lazarus by name, Lazarus, come out! That same Jesus is going to is going to and has called you by name in your baptism and is going to call you by name and give you new life and raise each of us up from the grave, raise each of us from death. So peace be with you. Amen. As we come to a close, we want to take just a moment and come to God in prayers. This is our time where we can just come and talk to God he knows what we need, but just come forward, place a candle in the sand. If you do not wish to come forward, you may just remain in your seat, and we will close our time of prayer with the Lord's Prayer. So we'll have the lights dimmed and just have a time of prayer. Let us pray, Lord.
let us join together and pray our, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our offering is in the back for Emmanuel and for Atonement. We thank you for the offerings for Lent uh, at Atonement. Our offerings are going to Dakota Oyate and Community Action here in Jamestown. And so, Lord, we lift these offerings and missions up to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand for our benediction and our closing evening hymn. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. And our closing hymn is All Praise to Thee, My God, This Night. Hymn number 565. Julie for playing um, our piano and one last one last announcement if you liked Pastor Paul mark your calendar because he's coming to Jamestown to paint in person for us this summer uh, we're gonna have an evening event on um, Tuesday night at um, the downtown art in the park and then Wednesday, plans are in the works of what we're going to do. So he's going to come and paint in person. And if you think it's awesome seeing him on the screen, wait till you see him in person. So mark your calendar, August 30th and 31st. It's a wonderful way to kind of end out the summer. So um, thank you for coming. Blessed Holy Week as we continue this journey with Jesus to the cross. Thank you, Emmanuel, for joining with us.
God bless you. Amen.